when I was doing, you know, my first show, um, I kind of had this, I had this video where I wanted to explore smoking and like, and like vapes through the lens of the FDA and how they regulated vaping and they sort of went after vaping. But, um, you know, it's a problem, but it's also like seems like it's a lot healthier than like just smoking cig cigarettes are like the worst thing in the world for any human to to be doing, although, you know, it's very fun. Um, but they're they're horrible for you. And so I did a video about that. YouTube like age gated it. So mm. now not only no monetization, which that, you know, it's acceptable. It's just kind of the cost of being on YouTube. You sometimes get demonetized, whatever. The reach was killed. So mm. now this video, which everyone loved, nobody can watch, or you won't get recommended, like, you know, the recommended feed. There's also a problem that now you're in a specific category. Like, I don't know how their algorithm works, but if you do get flagged for something, you could get put in a problematic category. Right. Which you're makes a you shadow banned or less likely to be recommended. Right. So, um, so I think especially, I think they say their official stance is they do it on a video by video basis. I don't actually know. I mean, it's kind of hard to figure out, you know, what's true, what's not, but, but I will say like, did I ever do a video about that again? No. Yeah. You self-censor. Yeah. And that's what that's happens. A big to people. problem. That happened during COVID with a lot of people, you know, people wanted to talk about issues like the lab leak hypothesis. Usually they're important issues too. Yeah. That's the problem is right. like they're controversial. So they are important. Right. But it's like, you know, I understand YouTube's perspective. They have, they have, I don't know how many, maybe they're supporting hundreds of thousands of people's livelihood. At and least. they're like, and they're like, do we want to risk it all on, so somebody can say some wild stuff? Like, right. And then the advertisers just pull out, they lose X percentage of the revenue. And then whoever that producer is that allowed that channel to exist, gone. now that person gets fired. And, you know, their success in this company is based on whether or not the company is bringing in revenue. And if you're allowing all these people to say things that are really terrible to the bottom line of whoever is paying money for advertising, that's not good. Well, what, what I've said is, like, I think a lot of these, you know, some of these companies, they achieve near monopoly statuses. It's hard to argue that some of these companies aren't close to a monopoly in right. their specific like domain that they're good at because you know if you're going to make a replica of youtube you've seen how hard it is with rumble because it's not like you're just video sharing it's like you're video sharing their ai their copyright id they i think they said they spent like 10 million dollars or 100 million to build the copyright id so if you want to compete with them you need to have at least that just to build a copyright id system on par, then you got to go host all the video. You got to find the AdWords targeting. Yeah. Google is the best ad targeting in the world. They're not going to give you access to their system if you're a competitor. They're not going to give you the same deal. So it's like this challenge of, okay, who can really compete when there's such a high barrier to entry? Right. So I'm thinking like, why are these things not considered some sort of public good in that because we accept that it's so hard to compete meaningfully with these things that are so important to our public discourse. I understand the whole argument of like free speech is just free freedom to speak against the government, not freedom from a corporation. But what I'm saying is when all our discourse is online, why are these companies not some f form of like almost like a utility company? Yes. Like, yes, on s at some level, you don't have the right to monetize, but do you have the right to at least say something? Yeah, that's a good point. And that was the point about Twitter. That was the conversation about Twitter being the town square and that it should be regulated like some sort of a utility. And I could see that argument. And it, also, when you think about the concept of free speech in the First Amendment, none of that existed with social media. And they would have imagined just trying to wrap your head around social media when they're drafting the Constitution with feathers. They're literally writing with a fucking quill. They, they had no idea what they were saying. So they were just trying to uh, get people to be able to discuss things without being restricted by the government to stifle tyranny.